Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night on the Homestead. Tonight's topic is... Oh, mousetraps and other pest devices. So, how's it? Oh, I need to shut something off over here. I'm getting feedback off the other computer. Not enough where you guys can hear it, but enough just to... I hear it and it just drives me nut, nuts a little bit. Of course, that's not too off, too, not too far off, is it, Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I'm still getting over. I'm still getting over a cold. We were sick at the same time, there, Gil. I mean, yeah. I this cough, it just doesn't go away. So, yeah. All right, get back up here now. All right, so let's say hi to everybody that's in here. First one in. Hi. <laughs> First one that came in was uh, the Kraken, and then uh, uh, then uh, Gardener Josh came in, and then Idaho Garden Girl, Suburban Hillbilly, and Chit Chat and Purple Tea Bear came in. Jay came in. Stephanie uh, Joe Roundtree, Alicia the Pro, the Pro. I, I said, I think that's French. I'm not, no, I, you know, so I'm not very good at pronouncing French names. Autism mom and urban grandpa prepper. Everyone's chit chat hey, back and forth. Southern Ohio prepping's here. Uh, oh, and, um, and actually, one of the ones I don't have a, a picture of, uh, Dave actually has that uh, rodent control utensil. All right, uh, see, everyone's here. Kaylin Strain's here. Ragnarok Prepper's here. Mary Beth Smith. Howie, food, for, for, well, food Forest Permaculture. Mm. And everyone's chat, chatting, saying hi. Lori J, the Queen of the North. All right. Hey, Queen. So that means we got two people from Canada. At least. I'm like five hours away from Canada. Does that count? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, not really. <laughs> if CR shows up, that'll give us three from north of the border. All righty. So, what brought this up? And this tells you how long <laughs> this has been on the um, on my list here to do. Um. Somebody from north of the border, whose channel I will not name, although he is in the, he uh, used to be in the medical field in an administrative capacity and thought he knew more than he did and was always go. Meow. Uh, so somebody told me uh, I didn't I did not watch the video. Uncle Al told me about the video where he went and pulled out his stuff. And all the mice and stuff had gotten into his food storage oh, and hard. ruined a bunch of his stuff that he had up there in just boxes sitting up in his attic. Nothing, no plastic containers protecting it. Nothing, just boxes of stuff. And they chewed right into the boxes. And we got Brendan uh, Duncan, 1900 Homestead here. And <laughs> that's right, Dave. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> Anyways, um, this has been probably, oh, geez, about six months. This has been sitting on the schedule here for me to do. And um, because basically he'd lost several years worth of food storage and perhaps toilet paper. So toilet paper became a mouse house. <laughs> and so that's what I'm going to uh <laughs> I'm just I'm watching some of the comments in the side chat and uh they're uh <laughs> yeah anyways uh so let's get back here to this and so yeah I had to I had to grab this because this was one of my all-time favorite games me too as a kid. I love that I mean, game yeah I mean I think we got it the first year it came out back in the 60s that's cool and yeah, I mean, we used, to, we used to play that all the time. Yeah. And so, anyways, anyways, let's move on here. So, there's the type mousetrap we're talking about, though. Yeah. 
And okay. Uh, I Old might, school. Miss, miss, Antique, yeah. vintage. Gotta love that one. That's a great yeah. trap. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's, really that's quite, yeah, to be quite honest, it's pretty much the only trap I think to go with. Um, if you want to catch a small mouse in your house. Yeah. Now oh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, like this is a really old school one because it doesn't go, it doesn't have the short one under, you know, going down in and stuff. It has that long arm sticking up over. Yeah. And so it uh, works a little bit differently, but it was effective. And then there's, uh, you know, getting to the new high tech ones where they go in and whoop. And it just scoots them into the side side thing there. And the then... old school ones though are double use. You put them in the bottom of the cookie jar, and because the kids <laughs> won't stay out of the cookie jar, well, <laughs> one time <clears throat> they'll never get to that cookie jar again. At least look first. <laughs> yeah. And then they're taking the uh, it, 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 the, uh, the to a new high tech one with little grabbers on it. So even if it doesn't kill the mouse, he doesn't get away. Well, it looks like they took a mold of an alligator's mouth. <laughs> and right Somebody with, was wronged by a mouse, for sure. That engineer has a... It reminds me about a different game, a different kid's game called Hungry, Hungry Hippo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with I resemble that remark. <laughs> All right, and then you have these these newer ones where it has a little, <laughs> little trap door. They go up in there, and they start getting inside, <laughs> and it trips it, and it closes way behind them, so they can't turn around and get out. Which is a more which is a more humane one if you're uh, going to release it out somewhere else. <laughs> what did you just say? Release it somewhere else? Who the hell does that? Well, when you have a bunch of cats, and you want to have fun. You take it out. Here, kitty, kitties, go get it. Um, another one that has you know the uh, you know they go up on the end up there and it closes down behind them. Yeah. Some of these are getting too complicated, though. <laughs> See, that's like a three hundred dollar mouse trap, man. A twenty, a twenty two with birdshot is like three cents. <laughs> Not anymore. Twenty two with birdshot now is five bucks. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know, but it, just, it seems you know the price is getting ridiculous on it. Now this is, oh, this, yeah. is this is an old school catch it alive. So they climb up in there. Oh, they go in there and they try to get it, and they can't get back out because the little things pointing are going the wrong way, and they get stabbed trying to climb back out. And it looks like that would make really good scrambled eggs. <laughs> Double use, man. You got to have two uses. And then there is the glue traps, which personally, I have never had any success other than a baby mouse on it. Yeah. I don't particularly care for those either because I think they're kind of, I mean, I don't know. I just think they're kind of cruel. Yeah. Well, I... Ooh. We got the rat ones, the big ones for rats. And you, you know, the one time you see out there where the rat rolled, rolled, rolled around, tried to get, finally got off of it. And it's like, Ugh. but you know, hey. Dan, it looked like Whoopi Goldberg when it was done. <laughs> no eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the stuff you got to really be careful with. Yeah. Yeah. Kids can get hurt with the other mouse traps. This kids can die from, and the cats can die from it, and the dogs can die from it. Especially if you have yeah, a dog like my daughter, where the dog goes and eats the go, hunts the mice. So you got to be really careful with your uh, your baits because yeah, the mouse could eat it. He goes out outside and he dies outside, and then other critters eat him and they get poisoned. So that's the problem. Yeah, that's the, organic, uh, believe it or not. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the plant, so they can use that stuff and still label a farm organic. Yeah, and then here's the here's the, the new one of the new crazes. There you go, a board in a bucket. That's all you need. You know, you got that little roller. Then that roller is supposed to be you know you 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 can just barely touch it and it starts spinning. Yeah. So the mouse gets out there. Whoop! I'll tell you what is entertaining though. If you're going to re-release them, if you release them in my chicken run, that is the best entertainment you'll get. Ever. You don't need a TV. If you had a half a dozen mice, that's an afternoon of entertainment. Fire up the barbecue, watch chickens chase mice all day. It's awesome. Especially if you got some good Rhode Island Reds. <laughs> yeah, the one that kicked my ass, Gil, I get it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that sucker got it good. Uh, 
Ida Garden Girl points out, owls and other raptors can die from uh, eating the uh, poison mice as well. Yeah, poison's not the way to go for sure. Yeah. That's why I only had one on there, and that's why, you know. You know well, I yeah. mean, we're doing a whole thing of how to kill mice and, and big agriculture and stuff like that. It yeah. uses that stuff. What I, I've i seen some of these here, uh, videos. on and Some of these videos are absolutely hilarious on YouTube. Mm -hmm. the I, guys watched, all, I watched they, Sean Woods a lot. And where they they put him out there, he got a, 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 a really bad infestation, and he's trying traps and everything else, and he's getting maybe one or two a night. Puts one of these up there with peanut butters and nuts on it and something else up there. And they're just whoosh. And they're coming up there two two at a time sometimes out there. They get halfway out and they're balancing each other until they get to the certain point. Also, one step's the wrong way. They'll both go in. Yeah. The, you know, they're um, kind of funny. Do you want some knowledge of why mice chew on wires? Why? It's because the wires are the, the, the machines that's made on use peanut oil as a lubricant when the wire's made. So it's impregnated uh, with peanut oil. Okay. So therefore, the mice think it's peanuts. All right. I can, I wasn't sure if there was something about the harmonics of the electricity going through that just kind of naturally attracted them. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there, is this, okay, because there is one more that could be on your list, but I didn't know if you put it out there yet. I got some more coming up. Okay. I got several more coming up. Okay. They have uh, on these things here. These you can do two way. One you can do it with a deep bucket that they can't jump out of, and then you can do whatever you want to do with them. Or two, you you put water in the and then you let them drown. But uh, here's another of the similar type, and it has um, the it has a floppy thing on it. So uh, when they they go out there and they get out the way, you got the food on it. They go past that counter point, uh, counter balance point. You know, they how mice will they kind of jerk around as they move and they and oh, too far, boom, and it drops them in. I could literally put one of those up with a tube on the bottom leading right, right into the chicken run. So it comes up right in the middle of it. So when he sticks his little head up, he's like, oh, crap. <laughs> that hey, would be cool. Hey, not only that, you'd have to put a, put a camera on it. And you could just record that all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure, man. Petey would, Petey would have me taken out. <laughs> well, I'll do you it, say, hey, you're not doing anything. It's the the chickens. The animals are taking out other animals. It's, it's nature. Not, not nature. In its harshest form. <laughs> and see, this one here is, um, there's a bunch of these different ones. You got to be careful on ordering these. Some of them are knockoffs, and they don't work worth Diddly squat, because uh, 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 someone had a had a video of one of them where the mouse went in there and nothing happened because it was so poorly made it wouldn't tip. Hmm. Now the good the good ones is they get once they get past a certain point here you have the food uh, to get to it and put them, down they go. That mouse is well fed right there. Like damn, I've never seen a mouse look like that. Mine all look raggedy yeah. and stuff like they're from the hood. Like <laughs> these things are like. Cul-de-sac mice yeah. or something. Now, here are these things here. Um, most of these that I've tried and used don't work. There's only been one that I've ever tried that worked that had two adjustment knobs on the back. So you could adjust the uh, the decibels and the frequency. And that's the only one. And it, and it didn't work all the time after, hey, Viper's in the house and CB's in the house. Um, Hello, Viper. Know, what happens yeah. is... On these, when you're using them, the mice in the surrounding area hit, hear it as a background noise. And after a while, they get used to it. And so they, it doesn't bother them when they get, come into it. And when I would see signs in my shop of a mouse in there or whatever, I would go over to the, to the one that had the adjustments on it, and I would tweak it. And it changed the pitch and changed the freak everything. And then it, it would it tick them off and they leave. Hey, gunslinger. And so most of these are just st are just a single frequency and after about two months they don't work at all because all the critters around them have become used to it and they'll come right in anyways so and then of course they have the the bug zapper ones which don't work for the mice but they work for the moths and moths can wipe out your um your food storage too mm -hmm. and uh so this they'll take out some moths and some other flying insects as well that kind of leave little 
itchy. Oh, oh, he got me, man. I'm itching now. So, um, and some of these are working, do work pretty good. They, they track it, you know, just in the middle of the night, you got to, oh, I got a big moth in there. And then, of course, these are the other ones that uh, uh, are uh, uh, a, a uh, frequency ad adjustable one as well. And it's also supposed to uh, chase birds away, too. So, uh, And you'll probably end up sterile, just saying. What What is that doing? That's like some kind of military technology, man. It's like you're shooting gamma rays into your body. Yeah, but, you know, this is the high-pitch ultrasonic stuff, and that's what I have there. Now, the one I didn't put up on there because uh, – Dave at Southern Ohio Prepping has shown it multiple times. And there's actually some really cool channels from over in England on it. And they go out and they hunt mice, rats, um, the um, the moles, the big, the big moles and stuff around the levees and stuff. Because they get in and start digging in there. And so the farmers hire these guys to come out there with their air rifles mm -hmm. and take out the mice, the rats, the groundhogs, the you know, all the other yeah. stuff they have. A BB gun would be a great way to take care of mice. They're fun too. I've done that. Yeah. Um, there's a stuff that we use called Mouse X. Or mm -hmm. it's also called Rat X too. There's a Rat X as well. Um, it's not poisonous to any animal. Um, what it does is the rat, rat or the mouse will eat it and basically they'll just, they won't drink and then they just end up dehydrating to death. So there's that option, but it won't kill anything. Like you can actually eat it. Um, it won't kill, you know, wildlife or anything. The problem is though, is that a lot of people don't follow the directions and they just put it out and they're like, oh, well, it doesn't work, but you have to actually bait them you have to yeah. like bait them first so yeah like take take it take a little piece of cardboard smear peanut butter on it and sprinkle it on top yeah yeah i i've seen that um there are so, several things like that basically it's a desiccant and they get in there and just dries them out and unless they have a water source to get to they ain't gonna make it yeah okay um <laughs> yeah, Jay. Dave, was that the one of those ones that? Um, oh, that was the, that was that um, impact one, wasn't it? That was the one where they go up in there and they go to do something, triggers it, and it just smacks it so hard it kills it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. I couldn't find that one. I totally forgot about it because I was looking at all the stuff. That's one. Yeah, the uh, Bersards did that about what a year ago. I think so. Yeah, so about a year ago, you can you know check with them or just ask them a, ask them a question about it on their Facebook page, for uh, Broussard Homestead Prep Studying the Cajun Way. But yeah, th I saw some ads on those too, and there are some there are some other videos on that as well. And the one the one pros, yeah, the one guy ran a whole bunch of heights tests. Yeah, you know, how far off the ground you need to have it. You can't have it too close because mm -hmm. the mouse has to get up in there. And you want it high enough where when it hits him, he drops out of it. Sean Woods, he, yeah, he might have one on his channel too about it. <laughs> yes, yes, CB. It's sort of like whack a mole when it's whack a mouse. <laughs> and I believe he even works on um, rats too. And Reef Robber's in the house. Hey, how's it going? Hi, <laughs> Reef Robber. How have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Well, I think you came in the other day. Oh. But... <laughs> uh, all right, Jay's coming up with the stuff. A giant Vandergar generator. Spark them to little rascal stuff. <laughs> uh, for, if you're going to do that, uh, Jay, all you'd really need is a Model A coil. Have it hooked up to a 12-volt battery. We have a couple wires across there with the uh, uh, the base of the cross across both the wires. And, yeah. I like killed it. a field rat once with a blowgun. I snuck up on it. I stalked it and shot it in the heart. Cool. And cosmic cultivators in the house. It's a big rat. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, the 177, the 22, five millimeter, uh, the pump up ones. Yeah, you can do, you can have fun with mice on those. Whoa, Reef, Rob, Reef Robber's been busy. Um, okay, um, I think that's the one. Let me uh, see if I can do this here. 30,000 pounds of steel this week. You formed? Wow, Reef Robber. You go, dude. <laughs> okay, that's... I'm... Dang it. Dang it. It's not letting me uh, click on that um, link here. All I can do is highlight it. I can't pull it out. So... Anyway, so people, uh, check it out. That, I believe that's the one from the Broussards. I can't even look at it. Wait a minute. If I go over the other other one, I can't do it, but I can make sure what it is. So on my, I look at it on my other computer. And, yes, that's the Broussard one. Yes, they built a better mm -hmm. mouse trap. Yes, and that was in October of 2019. So, oh, that's been two years. So go back to 2019, folks, October 30th. They build a better mousetrap on the Broussard chat. That's what this one is. And so you can check it out there. We anyway. got a cat lady on the block. Oh, oh, cool. That's cool. We have cats here, too. And to be honest, though, they're not always hunting mice. Like... I think they're just lazy or something, but we also have not that I hate to even talk about it because it is kind of embarrassing. But then when I heard Roots and Refuge talk about their rat problem, then I didn't really feel that bad. I'm like, well, then it's a natural thing that just happens when you have livestock, you know, but yeah. I mean, to say that you have rats, it's kind of like disgusting. You know, yeah. but it happens when you have feed and you have to feed your animals, you know, and um, we've tried, we tried everything to get rid of them. And um, I think we put a, a big hurting on their population. That is for sure. And we did had to, we had to change the way we fed our birds because we couldn't, we had an automatic chicken feeder and it was always available to them. And we just put the entire bag of chicken feed in, in the automatic chicken feeder and the feed was always there. And you just have to be mindful and you can't just leave that out because, you know, it, it, it's not good, you know? And yeah. plus the rat feces and all of that stuff is just not... Yeah good for your birds either it's not you know yeah. i don't think the rats have ever eaten any eggs in my chicken coop i've never you're, seen that you're lucky but we actually had our several of our chickens killed by rats they go in at night and they attack the chickens because we had the big norwegian wharf rats i mean these suckers were like yeah you know, like that big but, size uh, of chihuahuas no no they're twice the size of chihuahuas. But, uh, oh, you can eat them. <laughs> but, um, one of the things that, like, um, when we had that, oh, the wharf rat invasion there in Northern California, besides all of our chickens, we also had, had my daughter, uh, my sister was doing a pigeon, had a big pigeon coop. She probably had there he is. about, um, my husband, what he used, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Gal. He used yeah. this trap called the Ratinator, and we actually have a video on it, but I, heaven knows where it is, and I'm not putting the link in there. You'll just have to go to my page and try to find it, but it has a huge rat on it. You can't miss it, um, but it's this huge, you know, cage, and in the center, you can put, you know, we put chicken feed in there, so in the center, and we lured them in. And then they get trapped in there and it is a humane trap. So then it comes with a thing that you can just lower it into the water and drown them all. It's, you know, that's how you dispatch them. And um, we caught like 30 at one time in there. I mean, we were counting them and it was ridiculous. I've never seen so many. Um, that was like our highest amount at that time. And 
it's just it's frustrating uh, but when you have animals and on the homestead that is just something you're just gonna have to deal with and yeah. learn how and fyi do tons of research on rats because they're super smart you cannot use that trap all the time like you have to be able to use it like once a month yeah. that's how smart they are because then they won't ever use it again and um you have to trick them and um you know i didn't realize how smart they were you know they're pretty pretty smart rodents <laughs> so hey idaho garden girl and i'm su really surprised i know anything about this subject kill <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna lie it's not my forte but i've dealt with it you know and i've even dealt with it in the house here because the previous owners that lived here had chickens everywhere there were chickens everywhere on the porch, everywhere and dead chickens. They didn't take care of anything. And so we had a huge issue. And when we moved in, we had a mouse problem and um, we tried to get them with a, with like regular cheese or whatever. I've told my husband, I'm like, no, I said they like pumpkin seeds and they love peanut butter. You put some peanut butter on there, you put a pumpkin seed, and you got them every time. And so that's what we did. And we caught them in the house, thank God. And we don't have that issue anymore. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then of course we'll go out there with a 22 at night and use my husband's yeah. night vision and have a blast that way too, you know, because I don't feel bad about shooting rats. <laughs> so. That's what my uncle, <laughs> uncle was doing back in the 60s when uh, you know, because my my um sister was raising fantails and some other you know uh more exotic pigeons and when the rats come in there killing them i mean he, he'd come over there with his uh 1022 have it loaded up and he'd get up to the door and this is this was almost like a barn I mean, it was a 20 by 20 foot building with you know eight foot high uh, walls on it so you know you, you walked around in there and so what he'd do he'd get over by the one door and he'd open the door, flick on the light, and you hear, pop, 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 you know, that fast. And he's just shooting rats as fast as he can as they're screwing out every little crack and everything else to get out of there. But, uh, yeah, the uh, what we had was these ugly things. This is your normal root rat, roof rat, and this is a Norwegian wharf rat. And oh. I swear the ones we had were even bigger. 18 inches long. One pound, I, I swear these were about or at least two, three pounds. And they can chew through hard, wow. hardware, hardware cloth? Oh, yeah. They, they, my, my pet rooster was <laughs> in a hard, heavy duty hardware cloth ca uh, cage with several other chickens. And they went through one night and they got them all. They chewed from one to the next one to the next one to the next one. And so, yeah. And Joe's here. Hey, Garden State Gardener. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. And Pastor McQuaddy just came in. Hey. Hey, Pastor <coughs> McQuaddy, what's up? Pastor McQuaddy, look out for the dragon. Yeah. The the one thing that um, is interesting, though, um, we actually, uh, as, as adults, um, and my, you know, when we moved back to uh, Northern California, um, my grandmother had a, uh, a storage room off the side of the house, and she put her garbage bags out in there. And then um, once a month or so, we'd load them all up and take them to the dump. Well, all of a sudden, all the rats were in. All the rats were flowing in, and we clean were cleaning the garbage bags out one time. And we had um, the uh, five millimeter pellet guns. And as we can't do it, you know, we'd pin pin him down with a uh, square nose shovel just flatten the rat down hold it and shoot it a couple of them were there shooting at it and the rat just <sighs> at you it's like what the crap pump it up 12 times shoot it again and the one time i got to make sure i was thought you're missing it, you're missing it so i pumped it up 15 times put it down in there sucker started chewing on the barrel of the of the pellet gun and scratched the barrel and i fired it and it just and it just hissed and everything else and he, he didn't kill it he's like Hang on, I went and got my 22 uh, long rifle, came out and started shooting them. But, um, um, Ragnarok, do you guys out there where you are, do you have problems with mice and rats and stuff? <clears throat> he lives in the woods in uh, PA, so I'm just curious. 
and um yeah uh who uh yeah cb who got <laughs> sorry um yeah when you have animals like that um you just have to be prepared for that you have to be prepared for rodents because where's that where there is livestock feed there is bound to be rodents and um and especially with chickens, you're going to get raccoons, you're going to get all that kinds of stuff, you know, and there's got to be a way for you to get rid of them. So, you know, getting a 22 or something like that might not be so bad if you are considering on getting, you know, farm animals, um, yeah. you know, yeah. so it can help you with rodent population and stuff like that. You can't just call a Terminex or whatever, the exterminator to come out and help people. They're going to say, no, they're coming from everywhere. It's, you know, because all they all they're want to do is put out poison. Good night, Queen of the North. I love you, Lori J. Yeah. yeah. The um, one of the things that was interesting, they came out with a new round for rifles, a 177, same size as your normal um, BB guns and stuff, but it's a big old, it's a, it's a long, long round with the neck down, neck down uh, casing and stuff for it. Of course, now you can't fi find ammunition for it anywhere. But um, it was uh, had a little bit more punch than even a twenty-two Magnum. But it was a one seven seven caliber. And uh, I know some of the people around here had been getting some of those, and now they're all peeled because they can't get any uh, any ammunition for it. And that's what some, some were taking right here. Now they're having to go back to their to their uh, 22s or their uh, uh, 223s to uh, take them out. Yeah, mainly at the end of the fall. You're talking about a 17 start. HMR, Gil? Huh? What's that, Josh? No, nope. sorry, Gardner, Josh. Go the, ahead, honey. The 17 HMR. Is that what you're talking about? The 17 caliber? Yeah. Yeah, you know, the one, you know, one seven seven eight, you know, the seventeen HMR. Yeah. Ragnarok said he has issues when it starts getting cold. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you're gonna get that because they're gonna want to start hibernating. We we have those rats that they dig tunnels, and so it's horrible. Um, yeah. there we'll have giant tunnel like there's. I have sand in my chicken coop, so I'll go out there and I'm standing, and then I'll sink. Because there is a giant rat hole like underneath, you know, and it caves um, in. And it caves in. So we have that. Um, I I think we did a really good job though at keeping the population down, and it actually actually it stopped a lot of people. Um, I know our neighbors; they have horses. Our neighbors do, and um, they had issues with rats too. And that's another thing you, you got to keep after them because if not, they will eat you out of house and home. And then before you know it, your feed bill, your feed cost is going up because all you're doing is feeding rats, you know? So what, what, what's the name of that one you had? The um, it's the Terminator. I think it's called. I'm oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. It's called the Ratinator. My husband just corrected me, so I apologize. The Ratinator. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So and just... Sean Woods actually did. I, I know I talk about him a lot, and I don't typically like to name drop like that, but he has so many cool channels. And I didn't know this about him, but he also grows really um, rare types of wheat and different types of food as well. So the guy is like brilliant. And um, he's the one that did a review on this. And so we decided to do one as well. And he didn't have a really good successful review on it, but we have done it and it's it's worked for us. Oh, so they, they come in one way and it is, it, oh, it, it, it has spring loaded things. So as they come in, they push us down, they go across and it springs back up behind them. So they can't get back out. Okay. Yeah, that go, going back to that um, th those bucket ones that I showed earlier. Let's see if I can bring that back up here. They had some of these that were for um, you know saying you could use it on um, rats, but they recommended using a seven and a half gallon bucket, not a five gallon bucket, 
because that way, the, you know, you, the rats were able to jump. So you had to fill it up with like eight, nine inches of water in there to keep the rats from jumping out. But there was one that um, interesting for, I'm not see if I can find it here real quick. Um, uh, uh, mouse, M-O-U, mouse. Uh, yeah, tunnel rats wide. Sounds like there is Vietnam documentary going on underneath the chicken coop. <laughs> what? Hey, Courtney, everybody in, the side, everybody in the side chat, get ready for this one. This is from down in Australia. Oh, the what are they? They call those a tip a tip mouse? No. I'm I don't not know sure, what they but they're calling, it, they're calling it a mouse plague or a mouse invasion down there. Yeah, that's I mean, why just, they have so many cats. They yeah. have cats everywhere because they tried to limit the population. It was just like, it destroyed crops. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. And mm. uh, let's see. Let me do, uh, oh, there was some, what some of the guys were doing then was uh, unique. Let's see if I'll show it here. Uh, no, no, no. It's not showing it here on this side. They what they were doing to taking the big trash cans that have the um, the th the uh, thing on it, and the rat rats would come up and it would dump the into it. Or you're talking one of these big, tall trash, like a kitchen sized trash can, and they're filling it up every night. But they're not showing the. Uh, uh, Let's see if I do it. Just spell it all out. Yep, garbage cans. The best brand is Barron's. Interesting, Idaho Garden Girl. I'd like to hear your other perspectives on it, guys. So if you guys have, especially Duncan um, or Idaho Garden Girl, anybody that has a farm, put your perspective on it in the chat. Let's hear your stories, too, because, you know, each person has a different way of going about this. So, but... Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, they're not. They're, it's amazing. On the one computer, I'll find it really easy. On the other computer, you know, yeah, it doesn't want to show it. But yeah, they had the. Uh, it looked like a, a kitchen can, like or one of those cans you see at um, Walmart or something. But the um, they took the, the the flapper instead of flapping at the opening at the bottom where you put your trash in. It they turned it around and did it so it did it at the top of the spring on it. So the rats would push on it, it crawl, they crawl in, in there and it would close up behind them. How can that many mice live in Australia? I I think they were, didn't they get brought in? They came in on ships. Yeah, they got brought in. And then what they tried to do is they tried to bring in a massive cat population to get rid of the mice. And then therefore, you know, um, they just had even a bigger problem now with uh feral cats my, with feral cats yeah in a big metal trash cans yes we actually have giant um they're big big huge barrels with a twist top and um they used to have olives in them Ooh. they're food grade and they're huge and um we can i think my husband can put three bags of feed in there and then he'll you know and, and then nothing can get in there. But the problem is, is then you put feed in your feeder and then the rats will still come. So you just have to be aware of this. And, you know, and we still free range our birds and stuff, you know, and they're still out there getting food, but we only feed them twice a day. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one here. The good nature one. And it's, it's, it goes up in there and it triggers something and what? And uh, I guess with this one here, you can see the uh, the trigger puff of the stuff going, I guess, or something. I'm not sure. But, yeah, you put them in there, and uh, it'll nail them. And we just got a bunch of wild cats running around here, you know, living in a trailer park. So there's a bunch yeah. of wild cats. I don't have to really deal with it too much, except for, like, when it gets cold, they come in. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, I don't know. I mean, that's thousands and thousands and thousands. That's millions of mice. I don't think the snakes could <clears throat> take out yeah. that kind of population. I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, I really don't know how it works. I know Australia now has very, very strict guidelines about what you bring into their country as yeah. far as their animals and stuff goes, because they are an island and things can get out of control really quickly. Yeah. And you know, what happened What happened with that was is that the, uh, well, the mice population was around cities and stuff where the snakes weren't and stuff. And they started going all of a sudden they got out into the fields. And then they, you know, there, since there weren't any snakes out there to handle that many mice, the mice population exploded faster than the snakes could keep up with it. Yeah. Isn't that why they introduced cane toads over there was to get rid of the mouse population and then they found out they're poisonous and killing everything else off? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Josh. I know. Is, uh, what's funny is um, my daughter had an Australian shepherd and she has two cats. They've cats have already started about a month ago when the temperature dropped, started bringing all the voles and mice half eaten to the back door. And so they eat the good parts and leave the rest of there. See, I got one for you. And sometimes they come up there with the, with the, they bring well, the one, especially brings the mice up there alive and plays with it on the back door, bumps on the back door, trying to get you to open the back door so they can bring their, their pet mouse inside. <laughs> So they can play with it inside. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there was a, a, a while there then um, before I got this outside sealed up on the house, found out where the mice were coming into the house. And um, my daughter was uh, discovering, you know, mouse droppings in one of the cabinets. And she started taking stuff out of the cabinet. And she had almost all the stuff out of the cabinet. And she heard the mouse in there. And it's like, Reached over, grabbed the cat, threw the cat in the cabinet, closed the door, and waited a couple minutes. You heard a thump, 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 as it was chasing around, and all of a sudden it got quiet, opened up, and the mouse, uh, cat came out with a mouse in its mouth. So every time she heard a mouse in there, it was like, throw the cat in there. Cat would have a field day. Girl, oh, yeah, they'll, they'll 30 probably kill 30, 30 critters a day, but they probably only eat five. <laughs> I think, yeah, cane toads as well. The two mice that had got taken out by my cats were killed, but just left for me to deal with. Yeah, yeah. they cats like to gift you things, and they'll oh, yeah. gift you squirrels. They'll just, you know, they like to take care of you. They think you're, <laughs> they think you're the 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 baby or whatever. Well, they probably think that yeah, you're the baby, and they're gonna take care of you. That's how a cat really thinks. Yeah, yeah. or it's like. Yeah. Look, mommy, look what I found. Give me love. Scratch my tummy. Scratch behind my ears now. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there, you know, if you are having a, uh, a mouse problem and a rat problem, there are different things to uh, use. And the uh, video that the Broussards did, I think they had good luck with the, um, the, uh, the uh, good nature uh, rat trap, uh, rat trap, mouse trap, because I guess it's got it's got a CO two cartridge here on it that charges it, and when I go up there, it goes and it fires the little piston at the back of their little head. So, and then no, <laughs> oh, oh my god, I don't have we don't have cats, and when we moved in, the people that lived here previously had about thirty of them. And they left three behind and we didn't know what to do. I don't want cat. I didn't want a cat. And um, my mom it, it ended up taking one. So my mom has one and then the neighbors have some. So they are always walking through our back field. Now, thank God they've never tried to attack our chickens or anything like that. Um, yeah. But they don't really do anything <laughs> to the rats. They don't. Um, yeah. Fortunately, yeah. ours, ours, now are the two, the two uh, cats that my, um, the chickens won't bu bug the chickens because chickens are too, are too big for them. The chicks will, <laughs> every time she gets I'm chicks, so she's got to guard the chicks. But, um, and, it, and it's not really, it's only for like the first couple of weeks that the chicks get a little bit big. And it's like, oh, those are baby chicks. Those are those small one of those things. We're going to leave those alone. But yeah, they love going after the um, um, the mice and the voles. 
Yeah. So put all flour right in. Yes. Pickle jars, or if you have the um, uh, like a um, the, the the legal size file cabinets that are sealed, the fire, the you know, find an old one that's you know an old one. You just use that. You just put all your your stuff in that. And you close it up, and they're set in there. All our cats are, are barn cats. Um, but yeah, I can't, I mean, I can't really think of anything else right now. Like Gil pretty much went over, yeah, I you know, we, I think we covered everything all, as far as that goes. Yeah. As far as like all traps and, and stuff like that goes. And from my personal experience, the mouse X works, the rat X does work and you don't have to worry about like if your animals come in and eat that, like your dog or something, because it's not going to hurt them, you know? So it does work. You just have to put in the work too. You have to be sure you have to bait them basically. And you can't use it all the time because then if it's a rat, they'll get used to that. Now mouse yeah. is a different story. Mouse, mice are kind of stupid. Um, and so they don't really have that, the smarts oh. as a rat does, but. And I just remembered something I need to cover. Oh, I, I was since I, I didn't go. Um, I forgot to mention it on Monday, totally. And then I did the last, you know, my Tuesday and Thursday, I didn't do any lives at all because I just out of my throat was so sore, I couldn't hardly talk. And that is, it's gonna do it. There it is the 2000 subscriber Yay! giveaway, folks. Woot, woot. <laughs> on Monday, we're gonna have the giveaway. And so anyone that wants to know about the rules, if you haven't seen it, it's video number 505. Look it up. And the rules are for that video, not this one here. Don't make the comment here. Make the comment on the, um, the video from two weeks ago, well, a week and a half ago on Monday night. It's video number 505 and uh, 2000 subscriber giveaway. So, you know, these are the rules here. You got to type count me in. Let me go back. I hit, shouldn't click the button. You know, count me in. And you get counted. You get one entry. If you share it, every time you share it and you put in where you shared it at and the links and stuff, you get another entry. So if you're like Dustin, who has six entries in there, <laughs> King Poopa. <laughs> I, shared it I gotta be a close over. second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, shared it all over the place, and um, so uh, yeah, and it also, if you do a uh, a YouTube shout out video, that counts for two, just right there. If you do a shout out video, on I did that. that. Yeah, he yes, J, uh, Josh did on the video five. I give the link in your shout out video to the. Uh, number uh, 505 um, video on it here. And so that way they can fine to it. And then the rest of it is, so yeah, so every medium you post, you get an extra entry. It'll be on the Monday uh, night fireside chat on December 20th. That's this Monday coming up. You must be present to win because I'm going to spin the wheel and you got a minute or so to say, Hey, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And you get, you'll win. Now, what I'm doing is there's going to be a first place winner, which gets a $20 Amazon gift card. The second and third place get $10 Amazon gift cards. And the fourth and fifth place get $5 Amazon gift card. So what you do is you'll have you email me and I'll just email you back with the code. And that way you can enter the code straight into uh, Amazon from there. So, and that's coming up again on the 20th. That's a great giveaway, Froze. giveaway deal, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then once that one's done, Great Man Prepping has to do a 500 subscriber giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> and I just finally got my community tab about 10 days after 
they said they sent me the congratulation uh email saying oh you made 500 you know subscribers you're now eligible for a community tab it'll show up shortly 10 days later it shows up oh <laughs> Gil, you're starting to talk about your other channel in the third person. It's starting to worry me. I think you might have a problem. What? Well, you know the evil twin is how the evil twin is. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, so that's what the 2,000 subscribers giveaway is coming up on Monday. Um, go, go over to that video and. Let me let me pull this down here for us to go back here for a second, and I'm going to see how well I can do this over here. Give me a second here, and that is, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, let me just do it this way here. Give me a second. I'll put the link into that video in here so you guys can go look at it. Ooh, do I get to give myself an extra entry for myself because I'm putting the link in? <laughs> All right, uh, content, and that was a live, and that was number 505, Monday Night Fireside Chat, right there, 10,000 subscriber giveaway, go in here, and here's the link, Control-C, and... Hey, Miss Taz Christie. Thanks for coming in. So, giveaway. All right. So, hey, there. I got to jump down, y'all. There's, oh. there's the link. I just put it in the chat. Should be popping up there in a second. There it is. So, that's the link to the uh, video where you got has all the rules in it and where you have to make the comments on it. All righty, so uh, I'm going to wrap this up now because all the cough drop syrup I'm giving me is starting to make my tummy rumble. And really You're going to have a good poop tonight, Gil. That was quite um, graphic uh, oh, there, by the way, um, We went the whole screen without talking about poop. I have to do it. Sorry. All right, Courtney. Yeah? I am now the king of the poop troop. Okay. What happened? Um, all day today... I could put, I could bend over and put out a two acre fire. Oh my God. Yeah, oh my God. Yummy. I didn't want to hear that. Oh I just God. pictured the, the I, remember the, the, <laughs> the movie Dumb and Dumber when he's in the bathroom and it doesn't work? Yeah. That's what I pictured. All right. So, <laughs> oh my um, God. What did I create? Oh yes. my God. <laughs> All right. So, coming attractions here. Sunday night is. Late chat on Courtney's channel. Um, Monday night at 6.30, on a 6.30, 8.30 Eastern. Got to get the times right. 8.30 Eastern. The um, Monday night fireside chat will be the 2,000 subscriber giveaway. Then after that at 10 o'clock is Courtney's Media Monday. Oh, not this week. I'm taking oh. a break. Oh, you're taking you're you're also taking a break. Uh, yeah. I'd also like to say, uh, Wiley Living Saturday night at nine p.m. Central. Oh, uh, Wiley, yeah. Okay, yeah. And I'm not sure when uh, he, uh, Laura's on. On she's on Saturday or Sundays. She's doing it. Hedgehog, uh, Hedgehog Homestead. They're doing a they do a live usually on the weekend. Uh, Tuesday night is uh, prepping priorities on Tactical Tuesday on Gray Man Prepping, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, we're going to cover, you know, proper priorities of your preps. Uh, don't concentrate just on one thing. We're going to go over a bunch of big mistakes people make. And that's all I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off because I'm going to go take care of something. So as always, <laughs> stay happy. No matter what life throws at Clinch you. Clinch and I'm run, smiling. Gil. Clinch I'm and run. Smiling. I'm smiling. Clinch it. You can make it, buddy. I got faith in you. Oh, my God. Where did this chat go? My Lord. And we know what we know where Gil's going to go if you don't sign this thing off soon. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't, don't do anything, anything fo you know, foolish, stay safe, and keep on adding to your preps, uh, food, water, and other supplies, and we'll see you in the next live stream. All right, guys.